Good morning, friends. Welcome aboard. What we're going to do here today in the Michaelson Morning Program is uh, we're going to uh, chat with uh, uh, Rick Santorum for a while. Senator Santorum is here in the studio. He participated yesterday in a, in a big event in which uh, several different potential Republican presidential uh, aspirants uh, uh, were, were there. And you, you got really good reviews yesterday, I understand. You got uh, a, a lot of positive support. Well, that's uh, thank you. Uh, thanks and, to the folks who did that. And um, not even a lot of your relatives were here. Uh, not none that I'm aware of. <laughs> none that would own up to me in the past. Anyway. There were a lot of buses with Pennsylvania license plates, though. Not true. Not true. <laughs> we can't afford them. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> not yet. Uh, so anyway, uh, welcome back to Iowa. Thank sir. you, and it's great to be back on the. Uh, the Le- the Iowa Talk Leaders show. Well, thank you so much, sir. No, it is. It's You're going to say the same thing to my buddy up in in, in Sioux City later this afternoon. Well, Sam, so you'll say the same thing I, to Clovis that you just said to me. I know I? how you uh, should I? I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've never no, met, I mean, look, I've never I, met I, Sam, I, so say I've, hi to him for me. I've I've only met Sam once, and uh, I'll be on his show. Actually, you're right. Later today, I'm on my way up to Sioux City today. Okay. Well, uh, you're. The fact that you keep coming back to these things means that... Um, I just like you, Jim. You like the weather. I like you, Jim. <laughs> it's great to be with well, you. I fully appreciate it's, I always that. feel like I get, you know, I, I walk out of here somewhat exhausted uh, and, uh, you know, feeling like I've just gone through a fencing match, you know, and... Uh, dodging the uh, the thrusts and parrying i just keep asking you basic stuff no like you don't. what's in the constitution no, you, oh and, yeah and will you actually obey your it this listen, time the, the, your listeners don't <laughs> listen to you because you ask the basic stuff jan i'd let me let me just assure you. you're you're uh, you're you're good you're very good well thank you so much let me just put since our time is limited yeah uh, uh, i can only torture you for a half an hour <laughs> please take calls, Are there calls? <laughs> please call if, if you do me a favor help me please call ask questions so this so is you, not a telethon so, so he feels an obligation to take your call. <laughs> you so I don't have whining to... <laughs> for calls is beneath you, sir. <laughs> um, I want you to put you on your earphones here okay, for a sure. second because I want you to hear something that Newt said yesterday. And this is foreign policy, so we're going to get serious right away. And he, he was uh, on uh, with Greta, I think, last night. And he said uh, he, about Libya and what the United States role should be. Sure. I want my listeners to... Uh, to, to catch up with us. All right. No, we got to get serious. <laughs> I like harassing <laughs> Senator Santorum. But this, calls this are is, coming. This Watch. Is, <laughs> the calls are coming. This is too important. Please keep calling. All right. So here's, here's um, uh, what he said. The United States doesn't need anybody's permission. We don't need to have NATO, we, who, who frankly won't bring much to the fight. We don't need to have the United Nations. All we have to say is that we think that slaughtering your own citizens is unacceptable and that we're intervening and we don't have to send troops. All we have to do is suppress his air force, which we could do in minutes. And then we have to say that publicly that he is gone, that the military should switch sides now and we should help the rebels. And if that means getting them weapons or whatever it means, uh, the fact that there's no more Libyan air power and the fact that the United States has publicly come out for decisively replacing him, I suspect the military will dump him. That's a long soundbite. And it, it's, uh, there's a lot of information in that. But there's a, just an amazing expansion of the U.S. role abroad and a unilateral. Well, I say we don't need any of this permission. I sort of like that part of it. Right. If it's the United States' interest, why do we have to ask anybody? Uh, but, but assess the overall notion. What is, should our role be? Uh, Gaddafi has been a, th- a thorn in our side since the late 60s. Uh, he was uh, a part of the Lockerbie uh, yep. issue. Americans were murdered by his acts of terrorism. He's, he's uh, supplied terrorists all over the world. Uh, Ronald Reagan put him back in the box for a little while when he Ronald uh, Reagan bombed Libya. Yes, <laughs> and tried to take him out. Right. So I mean, you know, this is if you want to be Reagan esque here, they, they, it seems like the uh, the path is clear. Look, I I think Newt has it mostly right. I I, I would say that uh, you're going to be on one side or the other on this, and uh, you know, we we got on the uh, on the wrong side in Iran when we decided to do nothing. Uh, and I always remind people that the last piece of legislation I was I successfully drafted and passed was back in 2006, and it was the Iran Freedom Support Act, which uh, the, the biggest chunk of that was uh, two big chunks. One was to uh, pass sanctions on Iran and their nuclear program. The second was to, uh, to fund the pro-democracy movement there and to try to create covert and overt uh, ties to, uh, to folks that could overturn the, uh, the, the regime there, which I think is dangerous to the security of the, of the Middle East and the world. Uh, so we got on the wrong side of Iran, and in the case of Libya, same situation— Brutal dictator, enemy of the United States, 
uh, we're either going to be on the side of him or we're going to be on the side of, 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 the, of the folks who are trying to overturn him. And in this case, it, it could be pro- these folks could be problematic. I'm not saying we're going to see, you know, uh, a, a pro-Western democracy come out of this, this groups in the streets. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. But it's going to be no worse than what we have right now. And the chance of if we're on the right side and we're, and we're seen as an ally of these folks, uh, that we can do better. So I think Newt has it basically right, except... I'm not as cavalier on saying, well, we don't need anybody's approval and minimizing and sort of throwing NATO over the bus. I, I mean, that, that sounds good. It sounds like we, we can, should be able to do whatever we want, and we should. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't work with folks and try to bring them along and bring them on board to the extent that we can get people to, to be helpful to us and to, to, uh, uh, to support the mission. I think the, the, the better chance of success and the better chance of, of, of a more stable regime being built in, in, the, in, the, in the afterwards. But uh, I, I am for uh, – you know, being on the side of the rebels, I think it's a very limited strike. It takes out it takes out the uh, the capability for them to uh, to to, uh, to you know conduct air raids uh, against the, uh, uh, the the rebels who in, in Libya. And uh, I think the minimum the the, uh, the cost as well as the uh, uh, the the, uh, the intrusion is pretty minimal uh, for a a very substantial I think benefit uh, for the long run. One of the reasons why we have an interest in the Middle East at all is because of energy, because of oil. Yep. Uh, the Certainly Libya has a lot of oil, and you're seeing the result of uh, the instability in the, in the price of oil right now. You're seeing, you know, I was listening this morning, like $4.25 a gallon in San Francisco. I'm kind of happy to hear that. Well, I mean, these are the people who want high prices, so, really so they should be happy that, out there. And I'm really happy that they have to use that uh, high price oil to go up and down hills. <laughs> that's, that's right. You don't, have to, you don't have to worry about that here in central Iowa, right? Uh, yes, exactly. We get really good cash mileage here. But anyway, the oil stuff, our dependence on that has not changed. In fact, it's gotten worse. It's gotten worse. We keep talking about energy policies. This president has uh, actually dragged his heels upon uh, opening the key, up. The, the key thing about about the energy policy is it is a huge win for us economically and it's a huge win for us from the standpoint of foreign policy and, so, and, and so our tell security. tell me what your policy is. The policy is to produce as much energy as humanly possible here in America. And and I am for, people have criticized me, I was just in New York, people have criticized me saying, oh, how can you be for these subsidies? I, uh, well, because I want more of it created. And, in, and my feeling is, are there subsidies for drilling oil wells in Pennsylvania? Yes, there are. There's a tax credit. Uh, and I've talked to many oil, oil and gas folks in Pennsylvania, and they've told me that a lot of these are small producing wells. A lot of these folks said we wouldn't be drilling if we didn't have this gas this credit. But, but because we do, we can take this risk and we can move forward. And I know there's a lot of folks out here in Iowa that are growing corn and, and, and producing ethanol, ethanol. And if there wasn't some support for doing that, and if there wasn't a mandate for, uh, for the amount of uh, ethanol to be used, they, they, there wouldn't be uh, 6 $7 corn. Uh, we'd still be at you know, $2.50 a bushel here, and we'd be paying counter-cyclical payments uh, to, uh, to farmers instead of, uh, instead of helping create a market for corn. Uh, to create energy. And so my feeling is I, I did not and have not in the past supported the blender's credit. I'm not too sure that's the best place to, uh, to weigh into the equation, and that, that's the most efficient way to do it. I think from a national security point of view, what we need to have is we need to have fleets of vehicles in America that can run on things other than oil. Because we may be in a situation as we become more and more dependent upon foreign oil, where we, if there's an embargo, if there's a shutdown of the Suez Canal, if there's a, if there's a, a larger conflagration in the Middle East, we're, we better have vehicles in this country that can run on things other than gasoline. Are you and, talking about combinations of hybrid and flex fuel? Yeah, or? I think that's exactly what I'm talking about. We, we need to have fleets of flex fuel vehicles. I know there's some out there, but I think if, there, if we're going to if we're going to put any resource uh, in supporting the ethanol industry, I think it's in, it, it's in helping consumers purchase flex fuel vehicle cars if, if that's if that's an incentive we need to do or uh, I, I think that's a better place to uh, to do it again from a national security point of view we shouldn't be in a position where we're held hostage to uh, to, to oil and gas interests in the Middle East what do you think of what uh, uh, Romer said yesterday he got in the face of, <laughs> of Iowa said no more subsidies for ethanol no more s- subsidies for oil and it's I'm a not, kind of look, a gutsy thing to well, say look but, uh, Jan, I, 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 when I was in the Congress, I was against uh, all, you know, pretty much all subsidies in, in, in agriculture. But to me, this isn't an agriculture subsidy. This is a national security investment. This is an investment in making sure that we have all of the fuels. I'm a big nuclear power guy. 
you know, I'm not a big wind power or, or hydro because I just don't think the capability is there to really replace base load that, of any yeah. of any real way. Okay, here's the po- point, Senator, because uh, you're talking music to the, the ears of people who live here in Iowa. We understand ethanol and the, the role. It I plays. gave this same speech to a guy in New York yesterday morning on a talk show. I mean, well, I, I give this speech everywhere because uh, okay. this this is a national security well, issue. It's not a regional here's issue. Here's the deal: everybody's not paying attention exactly to what you're saying, and this is going to be uh, on a podcast, Good. and where we also have this. Uh, or we'll be videoing this, so this will be vcast all yeah. over the world too. So it's easy to convince us here in Iowa about this because we understand it. Now look in the camera and tell the rest of the world why this is not just an Iowa message and it's a world message or a USA message. Well, you know, it's funny because I was on this New York station. I was talking to a group of folks this morning, and I was saying, you know, there's a cynicism around the world led in, in, in recently by Al Gore, who said, you know, the only reason I was for ethanol is because I wanted to win the Iowa caucuses. And I, in my feeling is that is, well, Al Gore, you know, how do you know when Al Gore's lying? Well, his lips are moving. And so if, if from my perspective, if he was willing to lie about his why he was for ethanol for 30 years, then why do you believe him now when he's when he's saying you know why he was why he was for it, why he wasn't for it, why he shouldn't be for it in the future? The bottom line is Al Gore doesn't want cheap energy. Al Gore doesn't want uh, doesn't believe in an America that should be growing, both from the standpoint of economically and and from the standpoint of people. I believe that America needs to be growing, needs to be bigger, needs to be more robust, and that means we need more energy. If America is going to continue the the, uh, the great moral enterprise. That means we need to be an expanding, not just an expanding economy, we need to be an expanding people. Remember, America has the third lowest, I mean, excuse me, the second lowest density population of any Western culture, any Western country. There's plenty of room for more people. There's plenty of room for more growth and more dynamism. We want America to be that, that, that ever growing, ever shining city on the hill. And it, to do that, we need energy. And we need energy produced here and and ethanol and corn-based, whether it's corn-based or whether it's sugar-based or whether it's cellulosic, whatever it is, we need to create more energy here. It's good for our economy. It's good for rural America. And I think that, you know, look, one of the things that I'm uh, most passionate about, I come from Pennsylvania. We have the second largest rural population in the country. And the places that were always hurting the most in my state were always the rural areas. Uh, you know, the economy's changed. The economy's changed and it's moved the wealth and, and, and population into the cities. I think it's important to have a, a, a vital and vibrant rural population and, and rural economy. And, and mining and drilling and, and agriculture are the keys to that, are the keys to keeping people out on the land. And for, for us as a society, I think that element of society is still important. And, um, and you know, helping that, helping those economies. We help the economies of the cities a lot, and we need to help the economies of rural areas, too. And that's in the, in the best interest of our society also. Senator Rick Santorum is here in the studio with us. We'll take a, a break here, and we'll come back with one segment. If you'd like to be a part of the conversation, you can. I'd like to thank him for the gift of this uh, tablet <laughs> computer. That's really – yeah. It's only, uh, usually uh, politicians don't bribe me Isn't that nice of me to give that way. to you? That's really yeah, a nice sure. gift. <sighs> Hope you like it. <laughs> <laughs> the nice questions continue. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> a brief time out back in a moment. Be more involved with Festival through March 20th on Iowa Public Television.